Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yasha Allah. Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. All praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakaha Chodash, and the blindness to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone of GMS. To you I say Shalom, and Shalom unto the hopeful elect. All right, so I was watching um, this video here on the channel called The Military Show. It's a good channel. I haven't subscribed yet. I'm thinking about it. Um, but they have some good videos on here. And uh, this one caught my eye. And it says here, how would nuclear war between Russia and the U.S. affect you? And um, pretty much the video just goes into... Um, what would happen if a nuclear weapon would detonate? You know, what happens after that? And they, they go into the short-term and long-term negative effects that would happen if nuclear war would break out, right? Going into the casualties and, you know, from uh, radiation, uh, nuclear famine. They talk about all those things. And, um, you know, immediately I thought of I thought of Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39. I thought about Revelation chapter 8, I believe verse 10 on down, and goes into the wormwood. You know, I thought about all those things. But what I really thought about, like the main scripture that came to mind, was 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 43. And I'm going to read it. And. It says here, Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 43, And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. Beautiful. And and that's what I was thinking of. And make her afraid. Make her is talking about Babylon. Babylon is going to be afraid. Babylon, man, is afraid of a nuclear war. And Babylon is America in the spirit. They're afraid of a nuclear war. They're not really afraid of going head to head with any nation in terms of basic conventional warfare like you know going, you know using their uh, foot soldiers their special forces uh, their tanks their fighter jets scud missiles they're not afraid to fight because we know that their blessing is a sword so they like using the sword what they're really afraid of is uh, the short-term and long-term negative effects of nuclear destruction <laughs> That's what they're afraid of because, um, you know, it could destroy the whole world, right? It's going to destroy everything that they have. The world would not be able to function, you know, after a nuclear war uh, happens, man. Like, it, <laughs> that's what they're really afraid of, right? They're really afraid of. And it made me think of um, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 9. You know, that's one precept that comes to mind. Um, so how would nuclear war between Russia and the U.S. affect you? And, you know, the scriptures talks about this, but it's not just Russia and the U.S. shooting off missiles. Um, it's the whole world. You know, all these different nations that have nuclear capabilities, they're going to shoot missiles at each other, man. And the scriptures talks about this. So imagine all these different nations shooting these missiles off. How would that affect the world? You know, nobody would be able to survive. You know, you may survive uh, the blast, right? You may go into your bunker, but the world is, is totally destroyed after that, right? So that's what they're fearing, and that's why you're seeing so much peace talks. That's why you're seeing all these treaties being made between Russia and the United States and these different nations that have uh, nuclear capabilities. I believe they call it the SMART Treaty, S-M-A-R-T, and also you have all these talks about nuclear proliferation, um, dismantling uh, uh, nuclear weapons, um, halting the manufacturing of, of nuclear weapons. That's why a lot of these nations, especially like Iran, they get sanctioned, right? You know, so so um, yeah, man, that's what they're scared of. They're really scared of uh, of of uh, nuclear destruction. What's going to happen during the course of the war and after the war? <laughs> nuclear fallout that's what they're really afraid of anyways man um kind of sound redundant don't mean to be redundant but let me just get uh isaiah chapter 14 i'm going to start at verse 9 and it says 
Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Wow. And um, pretty much it stirreth up the dead. The dead represents the weak nations. You know, because the word dead is going into weak and feeble. And when it's going into the weaker nations that um, America has looked down upon for some time. So those nations are China, North Korea, India, Pakistan. At one point, those nations were very weak, you know, in terms of military strength. They weren't always so big and, and strong when it came to military, especially China. But now China, China is big now. China has a very big military. China has nuclear weapons. You can't just you can't just go into China, man. You can't do whatever you want. You have to respect the Chinese. Right? So so and and so basically, man, this is just going into um, the nations now, the weaker nations that have nuclear capabilities. And that's why they're saying, Art thou also become weak as we? Look, now we got the bomb. Now we can shoot missiles on you. And if we do that. This world can be destroyed. That's going to lead to World War Three. The war to end all wars. <laughs> right? So, pretty much, man, um, the nukes um, pretty much created an equal level playing field, man. So now everybody's equal in strength in terms of going up against each other. It's no longer about... Um, foot soldiers it's no longer just about having lots of troops lots of tanks lots of uh, fighter jets matter of fact let me get a precept let's get isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 i think it's 9 and 6 i don't know uh, 9 and uh hold on burning with fuel come on man i forgot it already I gotta get sharper man burning fuel yeah i knew i was there but it was just the verse up one verse up come on man I knew it was in that chapter, though. Anyway, so this is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. That's right, because a lot of these nations over the years, before nukes came into the picture, they relied on their foot soldiers, how much troops they had, if they had a big army, right? if they had a, a very good general, uh, a good strategy. Right? There's no longer a strategy needed. If you have nukes, you just press a button. And it goes from one end to the earth to the next, or to the other. So it says, for every battle of the warrior is confused noise and garments rolled in blood. And, and that's how they fought back then. Um, each nation, they would meet in the field or a battlefield. And they would just fight each other head on. You know, slashing each other with swords and stuff like that. And it says here, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Yeah, burning and fuel of fire. Yeah, fuel of fire. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen. Um, that comes with the ICBMs. You know, fuel, rocket fuel is put into the ICBMs. And a warhead is put on, on in the ICBM. And once that warhead detonates, man, or hits its target, it's done. It's just pure fire. Going to cause a burning. Right? So, so... <laughs> Um, that's why I brought up this precept. Um, pretty much, um, the nukes, man, they, they create an equal level playing field. And everybody now is afraid of each other. So it doesn't matter if you're a superpower. Yes, it, yes, you do have a lot of influence. You have a pool. You have a lot of power. But remember, you know, them weaker nations, they can shoot their missiles off at you. And it can destroy you. Destroy your population. Destroy your infrastructure. Right. So you don't want that to happen. And, and that's what I got uh, from watching this video. Um, these superpowers and these different nations, man, they're they're all afraid of each other. You know, they're all afraid. And they don't want nuclear war to happen. But guess what? The scripture says it is going to happen and you can't stop it. You can't stop it, man. You can't stop it. So uh, let me get uh, Matthew... Uh, I just feel like bringing this one out. Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 21. Because there's going to be a time that mankind has never experienced. And a part of that is nuclear destruction. 
this is something that we haven't experienced before. You know, we've experienced atomic warfare with Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all the other and all the other seven bombings that took place. We experienced that, and you know that shook up the whole world, man. And and that goes into Revelation the thirteenth chapter. Those were some of the miracles of the beast, man. You know, some of that that miracle that miracle was was him uh, uh, raining fire from the sky, man. You know, that shook up the whole world. People were scared of the United States <laughs> after that, man. That was serious. That was a serious bombing, man. And that was really a sacrifice, too. All, all those souls were sacrificed, man. That was a blood sacrifice. But anyways, um, this is uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse uh, 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's right. And the days are shortened for the elect's sake, the elect of the nation of Israel. And um, yeah, man, if, if life were to go on, um, we would all be extinct. And, and pretty much, you know, nuclear warfare uh, can, can cause extinction, man. Right? Wow, man, go into the long-term effects of, of nuclear destruction, man. Um, you know, it, you know, uh, nuclear weapons produce ionizing radiation, man. I was looking that up. That's crazy. That that kills or, or sickens people that are exposed to it, to that radiation. It contaminates the environment, which that's in uh, Revelation 8 chapter going into the wormwood. You know, the wormwood is radiation, bitter. <laughs> so that's contamination. That's pollution, man. Right? It has, has long-term health consequences including including um uh, genetic uh, gen genetic damage and also it, it causes cancer right so so that's serious that's serious man so those are some of the long term effects so so hey man that's what that's what you're going to experience uh after after a nuclear after the nuclear destruction it comes with radiation and nuclear fallout man but yeah, it's going to be something that mankind has never experienced before. That's why it says, since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. Okay, this is something that we've never seen before. And you, you can't really prepare yourself for this. You have a lot of people, and the people I'm talking about are doomsday preppers, these elites that have built bunkers. You know, you really can't prepare for something like this. You really can't uh, uh, prepare because so many things can go wrong. So many things, man. It doesn't matter if you stocked up food and you, you have uh, a shelter. It doesn't matter if you have water. It doesn't matter if you have uh, things to keep you safe. So many things can go wrong, man. You know, you know, you get into that bunker, that bunker, and then a mutiny happens, man. <laughs> then you're fighting for the bunker. You know, all, all, all your food, uh, all your food gets destroyed. You know, whatever, man. I, that's why I was watching. I was thinking of a show called um, The One Hundred. Came out years ago. I think it came back out in twenty seventeen. It's like a teen drama, but even though it was made for teenagers, man, it had some, it had some, uh, it had some serious. Um, yo, it had some serious. Um, what, what's the word I want to use, man? Um, had some serious. I don't know. I just lost it, man. I just lost it. I had some serious um, topics. Uh, for lack of better words, I'll use the word topics. I had some serious topics that they covered in the movie. You know, they covered AI. They covered nuclear destruction, a, a nuclear uh, radiation, uh, mutiny. Yeah, like th those are all the things you're going to experience in that show, right? So, yeah, man. Um, also, uh, movies like The Divide, The Road, shows you some of the long-term and short-term effects of uh, uh, nuclear destruction. Uh, causes anarchy. You know, you're on your own, man. What are you going to do? And these are these are some of the things that uh, we have never experienced before. 
you know, we're so used to uh, picking up the phone and calling 911 and you're hearing the voice of a first responder. Well, that ain't going to happen in that day, man. Because when them nukes drop, it's going to it's gonna cause uh, an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. All your electronics are going to go down. Your phone's going to be fried. Your laptop's going to be fried. All forms of communication are going to be down. So who are you going to call? Can't call your loved ones. <sighs> you know who you're going to call? You're going to have to send up a prayer. <laughs> That's if you're of the elect. All right? Or if you believe in the Lord. You're going to have to call up a prayer. All right? But guess what? It's not even going to get to that point because the elect is going to be scarcely saved. <laughs> and they're going to be beamed up in those sheds pursuing to uh, Revelation chapter 15 verse 2. So anyways, man, let me move on, man. So I just wanted to read that. Uh, this is something that mankind has never experienced before. And, um, you know, the days are shortened for the elect's sake. All right, so <laughs> the reason why uh, uh, time is speeding up, prophecy is speeding up, is because of the elect. All right, so we're almost out of here. And good riddance. Oh, good riddance. All right, so uh, now let me get... Um, we get Second Peter's chapter th uh, three verse ten. Second Peter's chapter three verse ten, going into destruction. Um, so here it is: a new heaven and earth. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Wow. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Wow, so, ah yeah, man, the, the Lord will come in and thief in the night. And, you know, when I was watching this video, early on they said that, you know, you everyday regular citizens that are going about your day, you wouldn't even know that the nukes are shot off. The only time you're, you're going to know when the nukes we're shot off is when destruction happens, man. <laughs> you know, you guys won't even know that the nukes are flying in the sky coming to destroy you. So that's why it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It comes when you least expect. And it's going to be so sudden, man. Matter of fact, pre uh, the scriptures say that. Uh, I believe that's uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. It says, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That's right. You know, when a woman is pregnant or when she's due, she's going into labor, you know, that, and hey, man, that, that baby's going to come. But you're going to go through all them pains, man. But eventually that baby's going to come, and you can't escape that. You know, when them pains come, it's a bitch, man. And you, you can't stop it. You just have to go through it. But yeah, man, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, and, and and you people are going to think that you're in a good case during the day of the Lord, man, during that time of destruction. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to go do what I'm doing, go to work. You know, another average day, just go to, go to Tim Hortons, go to Starbucks, or whatever it is that you do. If you people are employed, or if you're not employed, you're going to be doing your bullshit. And then... Boom, man. That's when the missiles hit you, man. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And you're not going to escape because America, you know, when them nudes hit, it's going to be engulfed with flames, man. And that's why when you go back here in uh, Second Peter's, it says the element shall melt with fervor and heat. You know, everything that we interact with everything that we see everything that we touch we smell we taste all those things are composed of elements including including yourself including the human body man so everything is going to be engulfed in flames everything is going to be vaporized man everything so i'm going to read it one more time but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. Yeah, everything is composed of elements, man.
Remember when you were in chemistry class? I remember that in high school. I took chemistry. You know, the teacher, he brought out um, the periodic uh, timetable, man. Right, and go going into uh, the different names of all the elements. You know, all those elements on that table were composed of all those elements. Of all those elements in our body. Copper, oxygen, hydrogen, all of that's in our body, man. Nitrogen. Yeah. So, so all the elements, man, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That includes you, the people. You people are going to be vaporized, man. Especially if you're close to ground zero. You're vaporized. That's your ass. That's your ass. Right? And, you know, that's only going into the short-term negative effects. Did you know that it takes around 10 seconds for the fireball from a nuclear explosion to reach its maximum size? I was reading about that. That's dangerous, man. You know, a nuclear explosion releases vast amounts of energy in the form of a blast. And that, that comes with heat and radiation. And that also comes with an enormous shock wave that reaches speeds of, of up to hundreds of, of kilometers, man, an hour. So, so anybody that's like ground zero, you're pretty much done. <laughs> Your lungs are going to be blown out. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna experience ear damage, internal bleeding, <laughs> internal bleeding, man. And on top of that, man, you know that's the least of your problems. You know, like, like uh, the blast is gonna throw down buildings and infrastructure. Things are gonna just collapse and fall on you, man. You're gonna get crushed. All that glass that that's gonna come off from these houses and these these skyscrapers. That's gonna cut you up and kill you, man. Right, so hey man, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Beautiful, man. Hey, and that's the scriptures, that's the day of the Lord. What are you gonna do? Who are you gonna call upon? What are you gonna call upon, man? Who are you gonna call upon? What are you gonna do? Verse 11 Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So you know that the destruction's coming, right? You read about it. You were taught it. The Lord opened up your eyes and gave you faith to believe it. So what should you be doing? You should be uh, repenting, man, and doing the work. Whatever lot that you're in, you should be doing the work, especially if you're an able-bodied young man. Or a man in general in this truth, man. Able-bodied. You should be doing the work. Praising Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? So you should be uh, learning these scriptures. Teaching them. Making videos. Going out into the highways and byways. And uh, confessing and repenting onto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's it. Not being caught out here and chasing mammon and chasing vanity. You shouldn't be doing that. Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's right. So everything around you, including yourself, are going to be vaporized and burnt up by thermonuclear destruction. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, the promise written in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament, Okay, and that promise comes with Yahweh Shai, man. <laughs> okay. Right, he, he ensures that those promises are going to be met. The promise that um, the Heavenly Father made between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Us inheriting all things. And being princes and lords and gods, man. Under the God, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Okay, so it says, Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And in order for that to happen, this place has to be destroyed. This place has to be cleaned up. You know what's a good precept? When you go into uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, it talks about the besom of destruction. Yeah, and the besom of destruction are the nukes, man. You know what a besom is? A besom is a broom. Old English word for besom. Old, you know, it's an old English word for broom. Besom. So what does a broom do? It sweeps. Cleans up trash. 
And that's what the Lord is calling this place. This place is trash. Everything that the so-called white men and these other nations have built up in wickedness is trash. And it has to be cleaned up. So how is the Lord going to clean it up? Through fire. Through things being vaporized, man. Alright. So let's get that. Since I bought it out. Be some. Be some, baby. So this is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 23. And you, when you read up, it talks about uh, destruction and, and, you know, the king of Babylon falling. It brings out more information on the elites, the Illuminati as well. But it also goes into destruction. So anyway, this is a destruction, a, a destruction scripture, Salakia. It says, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 23. I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it. With the beast of destruction, saith Yahweh of armies. That's right. Because the Lord is a man of war, and that's what he's gonna bring. Because you people have waged war on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know how you've done it? You've done it through persecuting his people and destroying his word. Right? And he allowed you to do that, man. Just like how he allowed Pharaoh to further persecute the Israelites, man. Hot in his heart to not let his people go. You know why he did that? Because he wants a good fight. So he set up all this stuff to destroy you, man. <laughs> you know, he, and it's, it's funny, man. He, he set it up so you destroy your own self. You know, Mr. So-called White Man, the sword, which is the weapon, modern-day gun, the nukes, those devices that uh, you have created to, to kill people, that's going to be your own downfall. Your own blessing is your own curse. <laughs> the Lord did that, man. To show how powerful he really is, man. Okay? And we know, man, the Lord don't even have to lift up a finger to fight you, man. Pfft. You don't even deserve his time, man. You don't even deserve his time. Look how he polluted his own inheritance, which is the nation of Israel. What do you think he's going to do to you? Come on, man. Low level. Low level. You and your guns, little cannons, little hammers and shit. Can't beat spiritual powers, man. Can't touch the Lord. Come on, man. So yeah, man, it says, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. Besom is a broom. Let's see if we can find a, a definition here. All right, so uh, a broom as removing dirt. English to dust. Yeah, dust. Because this place is full of confusion. That's dust. We gotta remove all that dirt and grime and dust. Because you people out here are confused, man. Dirty and dusty. Confused. You got men out here thinking that they're women. You got women out here thinking they're men. Man, I was watching a show called Top Boy. It was an English drama series, man. Crime drama. With Jake in the ghetto, man. There's this one character. I can't stand her, man. Her name is Jack. Fucking lesbian. A dyke. Carpet muncher, man. I can't stand that bitch. Right? And I'm like, this woman's confused, man. I know that's just her character. That's who she's playing. But that's some of you women out here. The so-called black women, man. You got a, lot of, got a lot of carpet munchers among our nation, man. You know, you people are dirty. You're confused, man. See, the Lord's coming, coming to destroy people like you. Dirty and shit. And dusty. People are confused. Even Israelites too, man. A lot of you Israelites in the truth, so-called truth, you're confused too, man. Lord might take you out if, if, if you don't humble yourself. <laughs> All right. So anyways, man, uh, it says broom, removing dirt to dust, remove dust. This place is dusty. This place is dusty as hell. All right. Confusion. So, yeah, he's going to clean up this place, get rid of all the confusion, and he's going to bring in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what Second Peter chapter three verse ten on down talks about, man. A new heaven and a new earth. But before we get that new heaven and new earth, this place has to be destroyed. He has to clean this place up. All right, and that that comes with nuclear destruction, man. Nuclear destruction. Let me get Amos chapter five, verse nineteen. You know, just to close up with this. Now this is Amos chapter five, verse nineteen. I'll start at 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. Yeah, oh yeah. So it's not something to, 
to want to experience. Like you shouldn't want to experience the day of the Lord. That's not a good thing. That isn't a good thing, man. Because what comes with the day of the Lord? Death. People are going to die. Judgment. People are going to get hurt. People are going to be humbled. People are going to be rebuked. And it ain't pretty. You know, when the Lord talks, man, that's that's not a good thing. <laughs> that's why he sent you prophets to warn you beforehand. So you can so you can turn away from your wickedness and turn back to the Lord. <laughs> Cuz the Lord ain't going to come here himself. But hey, you you forced the Lord's hand. So the Lord is going to send his son. And you know that comes with destruction. All right, so that's not a good thing. You shouldn't desire the day of the Lord. Not nice. Verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness? Darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. And that's true, man. And and that's what you deserve, man, because the Lord, he gave you the law, statutes and commands, which uh, those are those are lights and lamps. I believe uh, the law is a lamp. The law is the light and the commandments are a lamp. I believe that's in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. So you didn't want that. The Lord gave you all the light you needed to survive, but you didn't you didn't you didn't want to accept it. So now now you're getting rebuked. Now it's going to be darkness because you always lived in darkness. Cuz that's what you deserve, man. You didn't want the light. You wanted to be wicked. You wanted to roam around in darkness. Now you're going to pay for that. So, so darkness is going to fall upon you in that day, which is destruction. And rightfully so, man. Doesn't the scripture say you reap what you sow? And that's what you people reaped. Death. You made a covenant with death. So that's what you're going to get. Death. That's why Romans, I believe Romans the third chapter goes into that. The wages of sin is death. That's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get. All right. So anyways, I brought this precept out uh, really, really just to go into uh, the long term effects, man. And, and I and I stated some of them. Right. Because because a lot of you people well, mainly the elites and the ones that have bunkers, you know, you're not going to be there or you're not going to be close to ground zero. You could be uh, hundreds of miles away from the explosion. Right. So you escaped. The nuclear explosion right you, you you got into your bunker but what comes after that now you're going to experience a long-term effects now you're going to ex experience a nuclear famine you starving to death you know the ecosystem being destroyed because the the ecosystem already is already fragile d due to what mankind has done starting with the so-called my a white man what he has done to the world you know, all this pollution, man. You got all these these uh, fossil fuel cars, petrol burners out here, man. All this noise pollution. You know, this place is destroyed. You got GMO foods. This place is already, like, fragile. The ecosystem, everything. <laughs> it's already fragile. But but it's going to be even more fragile when, when there is a nuclear famine, when there's a nuclear winter. You're not going to be able to grow your crops, right? People are going to starve to death. So that, that's you fleeing from a lion and then you meeting a bear, man. <laughs> You're going to have to go through all these other problems. <laughs> well, that's how it's going to be during the time of, of nuclear destruction, man. And during the aftermath of nuclear destruction. So, yeah, man, I just thought I'd bring that out. It's not going to be pretty. not going to be pretty. I believe there's another scripture that goes into the Apocrypha. It says uh, they're going to flee into the mountains. And then they're going to catch hell in the mountains. I think that's 2 Ezra's uh, 16. Right, 16. I believe it is. But anyways, with that, I just hope this was uh, edifying. You know, just some thoughts. You know, you know, this was more of impromptu. I just did this in the spirit. I didn't really plan anything. But um, yeah, this is what I thought of. I thought of um, 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 43, man. You know, they're not afraid to go head to head against each other you know they're not afraid to go against each other they're not to go they're not afraid to go head to head they're really afraid of, of the nuclear uh, destruction so anyways with that just want to give all praises glory and honor do unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai Bahashem Rekha HaKodash and the Belanus of the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone 
that rule on, that they teach on, that talk with this truth to you. I say shalom and shalom to the hopeful likes. Kwame Shalom and blah blah blah. Shalom.